right. We'll start questioning. Opposition? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Mr Attorney, you might remember last November I asked you some questions about the police prosecution of Christo Lanka. Do you remember that? I do. And uh, that was in the context of a discussion about the efforts by the police to put in place a suppression order uh, on, if we can use the term, the publication of the coverage of uh, various uh, political commentary about the government in relation to Mr Barillaro. You remember that? Uh, I do. And um, your... Uh, your, uh, I think, uh, it, it transpired in evidence that the Crown solicitor had given uh, advice to the police about whether that application uh, had, had reasonable prospects. And I think the evidence was that um, it didn't. Uh, the Crown solicitor was a bit hesitant last time. Obviously, we don't want to get into the details of the advice given to a client. But can I ask you, Mr Attorney, I think in the transcript you said you would inquire into when the advice was given. Um, do you, can you or the Crown Solicitor tell us approximately the, time, the date at which <coughs> the advice was given to the police service about? I'll, I'll, I'll invite Ms Smith yeah, to respond. I, I'd have to take that on notice. OK. Do you think it's possible you could have inquiries made so that during the course of the day we could find out? So I might do some follow-up questions. Um, the issue here was whether or not the police had sought the legal advice prior to making the application or subsequent. And I think it was their evidence that it was subsequent rather than rather than beforehand. I think we agreed, Mr Attorney, that it's always prudent to get legal advice before embarking on such a such a matter. I think you'd agree with that? Uh, as um, a general proposition. It was a, as a general proposition, that's right, yes. Now, um, in relation to that matter, uh, you were also a bit hesitant to make comment because the matter was before the courts. Uh, on the 10th of March, the police withdrew the matter and agreed to pay costs. That suggests, doesn't it, that the application was unmeritorious? Would you generally agree with that? Um, well, look, uh, apart from media commentary mm. and social media commentary, I've had no involvement in that matter. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've never received... I, well, I'll withdraw that. Uh, I have no... Re my best recollection is that I've never had a brief on the matter. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never discussed it with any of my colleagues. Uh, I've never discussed it with the police. So, apart from media reporting, uh, I'm not au fait with the precise details of the matter. Mm -hmm. um, I think what you're implicitly doing now is that now that the charges have been withdrawn inviting me to provide a commentary that I was <laughs> unwilling to provide last time, um, I'm, I'm still unwilling to provide that commentary. Uh, I don't think it's appropriate for me as the First Law Officer to be commenting on matters where I'm not across the detail and I'm not required to be across the detail. Sure. Um, I understand... Uh, uh, impressions that can be given by withdrawing the charges, and I certainly understand the criticism of the police action in that in that matter. Uh, there is a suggestion that the uh, uh, gentleman who was the subject of that charge might take civil action. Um, I've seen on social media suggestions that the matter may be referred to the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission. Um, at, at least at the moment. Um, while there's a live prospect of the matter going to the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission, I don't think, as a member of the executive, um, I should be giving any commentary that hints at whether the LEC should or shouldn't uphold any complaint uh, that is made. I think that runs the risk of sort of like an improper signal to an independent sure. body that oversights the police. Sure. But the context of this is we have the defamation action, I think, brought by Mr Barillaro in the federal court. Yeah. Then you have, uh, if you like, the, the arrest of the producer of the program uh, that gave rise to the defamation action. And I think I was exploring with you, as the first law officer, the appearance that you know, the agents of the state, in the form of the police, appeared to have been deployed against a political critic of the government. Do you understand that criticism? Look, I, 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 sorry, I, I understand that criticism, but I don't think it's appropriate for me to um, endorse that criticism or um, 
withdraw or, or undermine that criticism. Mm -hmm. It may be different if and when LEC, uh, if, if LEC investigates the matter and makes findings, it might be appropriate then for me to comment, uh, just as I did last year with Operation Monza, where there had been a LEC inquiry and a LEC report, and I was willing then to offer my own disapproval of police conduct in leading to that matter. But at the moment where I think there is a live prospect that it will go to an independent uh, commission to look at, I don't think it's appropriate for me to be giving signals to what that commission should or shouldn't find. OK, so you're now the minister responsible for that commission now, aren't you? That's correct. Um, and that's that's new. You weren't the minister in November. That's, that's correct. So uh, under Section 34 of that Act, the minister can refer matters to the LEC for their review, based on what you now know, that what's in the public domain, are you sufficiently concerned about this matter to refer it to the LEC to make sure that there's public confidence? Well, look, um, I, I will see whether any private citizen refers the matter to the LEC. Uh, I think... You wouldn't like to get ahead of it yourself? Uh, no, well, well, I think there is a, there is a fair chance that uh, some such referral may happen. Uh, as my present view is if that referral uh, were to happen, then I wouldn't need to take further action. If it doesn't happen in due course, then I'll consider what's appropriate. What's due course? Like what sort of time frame oh, are we looking at? We're not talking about years. We're talking about days, somewhere in between, months. So we're not months, waiting for the months. government's response to raising the age of criminal responsibility, for example, or uh, some of those <laughs> other matters? This has got a bit more urgency <clears throat> attached to it? Uh, well, it, 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 I, will, I will deal with it promptly. I don't, I don't know that it's got urgency in the sense that it's something that requires a, a turnaround of days. OK. Uh, how much money has the New South Wales government essentially had expended on this matter? You've got this police investigation, mm. uh, the police prosecution withdrawn, the police themselves have voluntarily, as I understand it, agreed to pay the costs in that matter. Uh, you've got the use of the court time. Uh, do you have any sort of rough estimate about how many... Millions of dollars. This has cost the taxpayers. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, in terms of police resources, um, you're probably best to ask the police minister that question. I understand his uh, appearance has been postponed. Yes. Um, uh, Ms. Smith may know the extent to which Crown solicitor resources have been uh, allocated. And if you want me to, we can go away and and work out the number of days and an hourly rate and pro, yeah, yeah. pro rate it, but I, can't, I couldn't do that on no, the no, spot. No, no, uh, no. In, in, in terms of court resources. Yeah. I'd, I'd just be interested to know what is the total sort of cost to the taxpayers of New South Wales of that matter, insofar as you were able to... Yeah, well, as I haven't participated in no, any no. way in the matter, I don't know, and I don't know, for example... Um, well, there's no personal what, criticism what of you, the, Mr Attorney. <laughs> No, but I, I don't know, for example, uh, now that there's been an order for costs, I think... Um, they were fixed. What, what, been fixed. What, what the quantum of that will be? $12,000. OK. That was uh, no mystery about that. It was all, was all dealt with very quickly, I understand, in the Magistrates <coughs> Court. Um, but this whole matter arose because, according to Assistant Commissioner David Hudson, when he gave evidence to estimates, the police didn't follow their own internal processes within the Fixated Persons Unit. Uh, it, is that a matter that concerns you as the, as the minister responsible for the police watchdog? As the minister responsible for what? The police watchdog, the LEC. Well, look, uh, again, um, I'll, I'll see what private citizens do in the, in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, and if uh, they don't, then uh, I'll consider what action I should take in terms of a referral to LEC. OK, so you're also, as the Attorney General, responsible for... If I might use the term broadly, the integrity of the, the legal system, you, you accept that? You're, as a broad proposition. As a broad proposition. Uh, are you concerned about what this matter uh, has to say about the integrity of that process, about how you know, the, the, the police have um, apparently embarked on this matter without perhaps taking legal advice, uh, without, at least on their own conduct, having a strong case, yep. uh, well, withdrawing that matter? Um, as, as I mentioned at the outset, uh, Mr Searle, I, I haven't been involved in the matter. Um, my best recollection is I've never been briefed about the matter, uh, but obviously I've read commentary in media and I've heard the evidence here last time and, and your questions last time and Mr Shoebridge's questions last time. Uh, so, look, that's something I will look at, but it may be <coughs> that um, a, a private citizen might bring a complaint in the meantime. OK. Um, I think we established that, uh, as a general proposition... As the Attorney-General, you're 
you're responsible for the integrity of the court system. You accept that as a general oh, as a as a broad as a broad proposition. And it, it, it doesn't mean though that operationally, where for example over three hundred thousand criminal cases go through the local court uh, every year, that I can be um, you know, looking at the integrity of each and every every matter. No, no, obviously, obviously there's a degree of of delegation and broad oversight. But uh, obviously, where matters come to your attention, if they're sufficiently serious, you might take an interest. Depending on the circumstances, yes. Yeah. Um, now, one of those aspects of integrity is, um, is about the giving of evidence in court. Um, it's, it's a criminal offence, isn't it, to interfere with a witness or to try and procure certain evidence or to send well, it to broadly coach, speaking, yes. To coach, to coach that's witnesses. correct. That's correct. And that's that's three two three of the Crimes Act, I think. Um, in relation to uh, and you're also the as the attorney, although they're an independent body, you're also the, the minister responsible for the DPP, aren't you? That's correct. Um, are you aware of another matter involving the police fixated persons unit, a prosecution brought uh, by the DPP on the advice of the police, I think. Uh, that was broadcast last night involving the Police Fixated Persons Unit? Oh, look, uh, I've seen briefly in my skimming of uh, media clippings this morning, there's something that I've seen a reference to a matter. Yeah. We've got some video here I might play for you. Is that OK with you? If you'd like me to watch it. OK. Um, if we might just play the video with the sound down. I don't think it's required. It should come up on the screen, Mr Attorney. Thank you. Now, this is all in the public domain. Yep. So this is proceeding inside a courtroom. Uh, it's from the court CCTV. Down the bottom, you can see the police officer making signals to the witness, catching the witness's eye. This is a second witness, also catching the officer's eye, uh, causing the lawyer to turn around. Uh, Obviously, there's some things going on in the courtroom here. Subsequently, we've got the officer talking to people who haven't yet given evidence. He seems to be doing all of or most of the talking. Um, that's the same footage. So can, I just, can, can I just interpose, yeah. Mr. 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 Sell? I'm not, I'm not sure whether uh, it is a contravention of the Court Security Act for you to be playing this from CCTV. I'm not well, saying it is or isn't. I don't but, think it is. Uh, me sitting here and nodding my head is not uh, acquiescence no, no, I understand in, that. Any, in any legal contravention no, that may or may not be taking place. My understanding is this is covered by parliamentary privilege. This is a procedure. Covered by parliamentary privilege. OK. Yeah. Yeah, and we've, we have seen people, the police charge in and arrest people with no notice, though, okay. in those circumstances. Uh, anyway, Mr. Shibridge, that, are you, the Mr. Shibridge, I'm asking the questions. So here you can see a police officer sending a text message. We don't know to whom or about what. Keep playing, please. And then someone who's a witness outside diving into their bag. Um, obviously, you know, Looks like they might have heard their mobile phone go off. And this is the witness, the key witness, giving evidence. And that's the subsequently the police officer subsequently talking to people who have yet to give evidence. So... So something's going on in the courtroom and then the officer subsequently goes and talks to people. No, I think that's that's essentially you get the you get the sense of it, Mr. Attorney. Now, I think I believe that's the same officer that was involved in the arrest of Christo Lanka. Um, now, that was a, a matter that seems ill-conceived, and the police have withdrawn that. This was a matter also brought by the Fixated Persons Unit. There was a conviction in that matter, but it was subsequently overturned by the District Court on the basis of uh, 
insufficiency of police investigation or on any other basis. But there does seem to have been, at least in passing, if you read the, the judgment at paragraph 14, a, a query over the credit of the evidence, if I can put it neutrally like that. Uh, having seen that, as the Minister responsible for the prosecution service that brought that prosecution on the advice of the police and seeing the involvement of that same officer involved in the other matter we were discussing, uh, are you now sufficiently concerned about the possible interference with the integrity of that proceeding to refer this to the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission, or do you need to well, consider that? I'd, I'd need to consider that further. OK. But it's something you will consider now? Well, now that you've raised it, I will consider that. OK. Uh, it's, it's not clear from that video... Well, obviously... Uh, no, no, it's not. We, we, haven't, we haven't got any sound, so no. I don't know what the officer um, was saying to the person outside. Agreed. Um, and the witness... I, th I think you, you're suggesting that um, at the same time as he's texting something, she is um, looking at her phone. It's, it's, it looks that way. Yeah. It looks like he sends a text to someone, she hears something go off in her bag, possibly her mobile phone message being received. Um, but it does look, when you review the material, at least it looks to me like there is uh, coaching of evidence, including well, catching the yeah. eye of witness, two yeah. witnesses in the witness box. Well, look, obviously... Uh, it is uh, grossly improper to coach a witness. Um, I, I, to be honest, can't tell from that video uh, that that's happened, but I'll give that further consideration. OK, but now that you're aware of it, it is something that con you know, potentially concerns you as the minister responsible for Well, the it's something uh, that I'll give further consideration to. OK, but you'd agree that it's important for the public to be able to have confidence in the integrity of evidence <coughs> given in particularly criminal prosecutions, but all court proceedings? Uh, absolutely. It's, it's uh, critical that there is confidence in the integrity of the criminal justice process, and that includes the witnesses uh, telling the truth uh, without um, interference. Yeah, and there's a reason why witnesses, particularly in criminal matters, wait outside the courtroom while earlier witnesses give evidence, isn't there? That's, That's right. So typically a witness um, won't go into court until they've given their evidence so that their evidence isn't coloured by watching what other witnesses are saying or doing in court. Yeah, and it would be a, uh, an interference with that general proposition if somebody were to be briefing witnesses about what had happened in court. Well, that's right. I mean, it, it's, it's not improper, for example, for someone to tell a witness. In fact, it's what you should do, tell a witness that um, you, know, you will go in the witness box, you'll be sworn in, um, you know, your counsel will, might ask you a few questions and then counsel on the other side will cross-examine you. Mm -hmm. um, it's not improper to find out you know, what the witness is likely to say, get their witness statement. But, proof but, of evidence. Yeah, example. proof of evidence, um, as you'd know. But um, obviously it's improper for witnesses to be colluding or for coaching to, to be taking place. Yeah, and where that happens, if, that's, you know, that, it, where, if, if it's the case that that's happened, that's a concern, and if it's the case that involves the police... Uh, in this particular instance, if that were to be the case, that would also be a matter of concern? Yeah, if, if hypothetically uh, there were that coaching, uh, then it's, it's a concern, and if hypothetically it's coaching by the police, well, then that, that would make it worse. And that would be a matter, if you were satisfied of that, that, that is a matter you would refer to the LEC, or would you wait for a member of the public to make that concern? That oh, well, I'd, I'd, I'd see whether a member of the public were doing it, but I wouldn't be waiting um, uh, for uh, a, a long time. Um, now that you're aware of this matter, is it something that you would you, you will uh, evaluate expeditiously? Uh, it's something I will evaluate. Well, I will get advice on promptly. Okay, thank you very much. I think those are my questions for the moment. Yep. Um, nice to see you, Attorney. And likewise, again, thank you. this is the budget estimates hearing that will not end. I think this is the third round. So welcome back. Thank you. Um, Attorney, going back to the Kristen Lanka matter, um, we know that the state of New South Wales, through the police, has had to pay at least $12,000 in costs to, to, to Mr Lanka for the legal expenses that he's incurred. We know that it was an appalling allegation to make against somebody that they engaged in the crime of stalking when there was never sufficient evidence for the police to proceed with that. Um, uh, are you saying that after an instant like that, where the charges have been withdrawn, a substantial amount of public money is paid over to the um, to the defendant for a case that should never have been brought, 
that there's no systemic review of it? Your, no. your department does no systemic no, no. review. Is uh, that what you're saying? Well, well I don't. I don't, as Attorney General. Um, you, I was asked a question by Mr. Uh, Searle about uh, the integrity of the legal system. Um, I, I, given there are hundreds of thousands of cases that come to court every year, uh, I, I, in my office, uh, don't have the resources to be um, looking at every case that has come to court. Um, if charges have Don't been to be withdrawn, clear, hang on. When I, I'm talking I about every case, I haven't finished my answer. I haven't finished my answer. Uh, if um, charges have been withdrawn, uh, then you would think that means that uh, police don't think they can prove their case. Um, whether or not the case should have ever been brought in those circumstances uh, is not something that I, as an outsider at the moment, can opine on. Uh, and I'd expect that if a private citizen has a complaint about that, um, they will take it to LEC. And if they don't, then I'll consider what I may do. Well, LEC has no oversight of the courts. That's not LEC's job. Well, LEC has no oversight of, um, of um, proceedings in courts. That's your job, attorney. Well, the, 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 I think the implication here is that, uh, well, I'll just be clear, the, the, the suggestion you might be making is that the police have acted improperly in this matter. Um, that is not uh, any reflection on the court. That's a question of uh, police action. Uh, I anticipate um, the fair chance that a private citizen will make some sort of complaint about that to LEC. Uh, so at the moment, I'll wait and see what happens in that respect. Um, but it's not, it's not a court oversight matter. It's a, it's a police oversight matter. Because well, the court, the court the, the, no evidence was ultimately led in the court, and the court was not required to make a determination. No, but it was on the initiative of the court that, admittedly, commenced by the police, but it was the court that 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 um, effectively initiated the, the... Well, it was the court proceedings and the power of the court that compelled Mr Lanker to be there and to incur the legal costs. Um, I, I don't understand why there isn't a process in the Attorney-General's department to at least do a, a basic review when the courts on the face of it have been abused like this by another government agency. Because if we're just relying on police investigating police, nothing will happen. Well, look, you know, if, if there's been an abusive process um, by the police, you've got an independent law enforcement conduct commission there to oversee that. Uh, if... If a, you know, you've also got independent courts that, if the matter goes far enough, can make findings about an abusive process. Uh, a litigant can uh, contend in court that something is an abusive process. So when you have courts potentially dealing with that issue, uh, when you have a an independent police oversight body dealing with that issue, you don't need a politician and his staffers um, or, indeed, his department overseeing that as well. You've got two independent oversight mechanisms already. The courts, if the matter progresses far enough, on the one hand, uh, and the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission on the other hand. So, in this case, it was simply a matter of accidental good fortune that Mr Lanker managed to have sufficient resources to fully test the police case and challenge it in court. Now, he may, he just may have enough resources to bring another civil case at yet more expense to try and vindicate his rights. But are you saying for those people who don't have those resources um, that, and they're not able to bring a civil case, that there's just nothing? No, Your not, department not won't do anything because you're saying it's up to them to challenge an organisation as powerful as the New South Wales Police. No, I'm just saying there is a, a taxpayer-funded law enforcement uh, conduct commission that is independent of government that can receive complaints from the members of the public without uh, any need for vetting or imprimatur from the executive. So uh, there is a mechanism there. I, I take your point about civil proceedings and uh, that, um, you know, unfortunately, typically you need deep pockets to bring civil proceedings. I take that point. But so far as police oversight is concerned by the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission, uh, you don't need a deep pocket to make that complaint. You know that the Law Enforcement Conduct Commission... Um, investigates a fraction of the complaints. It's, I think, 2 or 3% of the complaints it receives because it simply doesn't have funding to investigate more than 2 or 3% of the complaints. You, you know that, don't you, Attorney? Well, I, I don't know that. Um, it, it may well be... Well, that... you're, you're the Minister responsible. I haven't finished my answer. 
Um, uh, I don't know that. Um, it may be that um, a, a only a minority of complaints are investigated, but uh, LEC would also have a vetting mechanism where if they don't think a complaint is sufficiently serious or well-grounded, uh, they won't pursue it. But I, you know, if, if a complaint is made in this case, then... Um, uh, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to hint what LEC might do, but um, there's no reason to think LEC won't look at it. Well, you, you challenge my proposition that it's only a tiny fraction of the cases that are referred, the complaints that are referred to LEC that are investigated. If, if it's no, not 2 or 3%, that. let me finish. If it's not 2 or 3%, what percentage of complaints end up being fully investigated um, by the LEC? I... I, I um, I'll have to take the percentage on notice. I didn't challenge your proposition that only a small percentage end up being fully investigated. What I did challenge was uh, the suggestion that it is a resourcing issue uh, as distinct from filtering by elect to work out what ca cases it considers are worthy of investigation and what cases are either um, well-grounded or not sufficiently serious that warrant its attention. Well, the LEC has made it clear in its annual reports that it has insufficient funds to do the tasks which it's been assigned, it said that in its own annual reports. You're not challenging that conclusion from the LEC, are you? Well, uh, the, the LEC and other integrity agencies at the moment uh, have been consulted by government about um, what their baseline funding should be going forward. Um, as you know, um, there have been parliamentary inquiries and an Auditor General's report about funding of integrity agencies, and that's something the government is looking at in the next budget. Um, Attorney, you've, you've just seen a small part of the, um, the, the video evidence from the more recent trial, which, which were, were the actions of an officer who was one of the primary movers in the Christo Lanka prosecution, um, again is, in undertaking, is engaging in actions which on the face of it appears to be highly problematic. You, you don't think that that those facts together should motivate you to commence some investigation of what's going on in the courts? Well, well, I'll give that uh, consideration. Um, it, it wasn't entirely clear to me watching that video um, just exactly what happened. Um, the fact that a policeman is speaking to witnesses outside court, um, if, unless you know what he's saying, um, what they're saying back and what it's about, um, you know, you can't uh, necessarily jump to conclusions. Um, the fact that someone in the witness box uh, picks up their phone, I can't... I, I, no, I don't I think can't, that, was, that on, wasn't in the witness box. That wasn't in the witness box. Well, well I can't, I can't sitting, sitting here, um, jump to conclusions and join the dots. Now, I want to be very clear that if, if there is any coaching, I'm not excusing that, and I'm not saying it did or didn't happen. I just can't tell from that video what happened. And as I said, I'll give the matter further consideration. But, I'm, but I, on, the, on the basis of a video without sound... Uh, sitting here, I'm not going to jump to conclusions right now. Well, Attorney, I'm not asking you to form a conclusion, but I am going to ask you whether or not you'd be willing to look at the very lengthy um, video, which you only saw a small fraction of, where the officer repeatedly comes out of the court um, and repeatedly speaks to witnesses waiting as the evidence is unfolding in court. Now... Will you, will, you, will you seek a review within your department of the evidence that shows that repeated behaviour by the officer? I will get advice from the department. And, and can I indicate the, the behaviour is particularly troubling because the officer appears to be repeating um, hand movements indicating critical elements of the case... Um, as given by witnesses and as conveyed by counsel in the course of the um, proceedings, that I accept, as, as you say, we can't draw conclusions from what's there, but there's, I would, I would suggest to you, and I'd ask if you agree, there is sufficient there to commence an investigation. Uh, well, look, uh, I can't agree or disagree. Um, I... I, I <laughs> There, there is insufficient there to form a conclusion, but you're you're not putting that to me. You're saying, will I, will I investigate? Um, I will. I will get advice.